In the world of traditional finance, something unprecedented is happening. A single company has accumulated over $16 billion worth of Bitcoin. But that's not even the most interesting part of this story. Really, MicroStrategy is pioneering a new market. We're issuing securities backed by digital capital, but backed by Bitcoin. This is Michael Saylor and his company, MicroStrategy. They aren't just buying Bitcoin. They're creating an entirely new way to use it in traditional finance. Meet Michael Saylor, the technology entrepreneur who started MicroStrategy in 1989 and took it public on the NASDAQ in 98. What is an enterprise software company is now better known as the world's first and largest corporate holder of Bitcoin. When people online discovered what MicroStrategy was doing with Bitcoin, they called it an infinite money glitch. But according to Saylor, they're missing the bigger picture. See, the, the misnomer there is it's not a money glitch. It is a digital transformation of the capital markets. When uh, you have a, a system that moves from a higher energy state, a more disordered state, to a lower energy state, lots of energy gets given off. Think of steam becoming water. Like, is it a money glitch? It's just steam becoming water and it condenses. Today, we're breaking down exactly how Bitcoin-backed securities work, why they matter, and what they could mean for the future of finance. We'll hear from Michael Saylor himself as he explains exactly how his company is reshaping the financial world. Let's jump right in. To understand why Bitcoin-backed securities matter, we first need to look at what's wrong with our current financial system. And according to Saylor, there are some major issues. What I talked about with, if you study the, the convertible bond market, someone issues a convertible bond, it takes them five years for the investors to figure out whether it worked. And then when they come up with a new convertible bond, it's a different credit proposition. It's very inefficient, right? If you think about preferred stocks, very inefficient, junk bonds, very inefficient, private credit, very inefficient, fixed income, people get very low yields. Think about that for a moment. In today's market, when a company wants to raise money, they need to wait years to know if their strategy works. But the problems don't stop there. So of the 900 trillion in capital in the global capital markets, half of it is just long-term store of value, long-term capital, you know? That is pure capital. People with money just want to keep their money. Rich just want to stay rich. I give you an organization a billion dollars in the endowment, you just want to not lose the billion dollars. Precisely. So that 450 trillion is invested in buildings that are rusting. It's invested in cars, it's invested in fleets, it's invested in things that suffer from 20th century risk factors. Credit default, war, tariff, tornado. Tax. Ta you know, like you had a good business at Kodak and your family had all their money in Kodak and then what happened? Or you owned Xerox and what happened? Then you owned the best business in Ukraine and then there's a war that happened. The traditional financial world faces countless risks that can destroy wealth in an instant. But Saylor believes there's a solution. I could give you 10,000 examples of risk factors that destroy wealth. So you've got that, 450 trillion on one side, and then you've got 1 trillion digital capital. It's like, well, I had a building, I get rid of all the things that make the building a problem, and I make it an invisible, immortal, indestructible, teleportable digital building. That'd be cool. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what Bitcoin is. So how exactly is MicroStrategy using Bitcoin to create new financial products? Let's break down their strategy. Well, um, the way to think about MicroStrategy is uh, three components. We've got a balance sheet, which is the Bitcoin balance sheet. We've got a software business, a technology business, and, and that was the springboard for us to get into Bitcoin. And now we've got an emerging Bitcoin securitization business where we're a Bitcoin development company. The key here is the last part, the Bitcoin securization business. But what does that actually mean? Here's how it works. MicroStrategy has permanent capital. So for example, we can do things like uh, we can issue convertible bonds on top of that capital. So if you have you know, we have 16 to 17 billion in, in Bitcoin exposure. We have 4.2 billion in convertible bonds. The bonds we can issue fairly cheaply because we have a, a stock. The stock reflects the permanent capital of the Bitcoin, but that's not redeemable either. That means that it can generate a premium to the Bitcoin. But it gets even more interesting. 
The company isn't just issuing bonds, they're using a strategy that creates value for everyone involved. So as people trade the stock and they trade the options on the stock, the stock trades at a premium to the asset value. And when the stock trades at a premium to the asset value, the company issues either equity or convertible bonds at a premium to the underlying assets. When we do that, we don't just put the money in the bank or in T-bills, we actually invest the money in Bitcoin. To show how powerful this strategy is, Saylor gives us a practical example. So you could imagine when the company issues, if we were to sell a billion dollars of equity in the market and it's backed by 500 million of Bitcoin at 100% premium, then we buy the Bitcoin and three days later, we've generated a $500 million gain for our shareholders in Bitcoin. And this isn't just a one-time thing. The company can repeat this process. And then we're buying the Bitcoin back. So what that means is I could issue the bond in one week, buy the Bitcoin, capture the three, four, $500 million gain, announce it to the market. The stock would trade up. I could do another bond the next week. What MicroStrategy is doing isn't just about making money. It's about fundamentally changing how capital moves through our financial system. To explain this transformation, Saylor uses a fascinating comparison to basic physics. You look at uh, DVOL, Bitcoin volatility, 55 versus the VIX. And so if you look at the two, it's, it's not a complicated thing. It's a thermodynamic idea that any physicist will tell you, this is a hot fluid, this is a cold fluid, I pull up the gate and I mix the fluids and how hot is the bathtub? It's somewhere in between. This simple analogy helps explain a complex economic shift. Just as hot and cold water eventually find equilibrium, Saylor believes traditional finance and Bitcoin are mixing to create something new. To illustrate this further, he gives us a concrete example of how this transformation works in practice. Now this comes up. Because what happens when Apple and Google and Microsoft and Facebook or, or whatever, when they buy Bitcoin? What happens when that, you could take the bottom 98% of the S&P 500, if they bought Bitcoin, their performance would start to approach the big tech. And so the performance of the S&P index will move toward Bitcoin as they put Bitcoin on the balance sheet. This isn't just theory. Saylor believes this shift is inevitable because digital assets solve fundamental problems that have plagued traditional finance for centuries. You know, if you understand it as thermodynamics and collapsing into a more efficient energy state, like how is it not more efficient to be able to teleport a building 60 times a second between New York and London? Like that's efficient versus your family made an investment in London 30, 40 years ago and they changed the law last month and now you're gonna lose all your wealth. That's inefficient, right? So. Bitcoin is the digital transformation of capital. MicroStrategy is just a business taking advantage of the digital transformation. One of the most interesting aspects of Bitcoin-backed securities is how they can serve different types of investors. Not everyone wants the same level of risk or reward. And MicroStrategy has figured out how to cater to these varying needs. So. On top of this stack, if you're looking at spot Bitcoin ETF, spot Bitcoin, you either buy Bitcoin or you buy IBIT or FBTC, they're offering you standard Bitcoin returns, 50 ARR with 50 vol, 50 volatility and 50 ARR, and 100% upside, 100% downside. That is the digital commodity. But what if you want something different? This is where MicroStrategy's innovation comes in. They've created a range of products that offer different levels of exposure to Bitcoin's potential. MicroStrategy, the stock, is 1.5x. And the way we get to 1.5x is we issue these bonds, which give you half the upside of Bitcoin, little downside. What if I want half the upside, 5% of the downside? Right? Well, that's you buy a convertible bond, senior in the capital structure of a company that's for X over collateralized. This flexibility means they can serve everyone, from conservative investors to those seeking higher returns. It's a complete transformation of how people can invest in Bitcoin. So people that are risk averse, they can actually buy the bond and get half the benefit. People that are Bitcoin maximalists can buy the equity and get 1.5% benefit. The degenerates, the traders, 
they can get three to 10X, and then the haters can short the common stock are short with puts. This approach has made MicroStrategy a key player in bringing Bitcoin to traditional finance. As Saylor explains, they're not just creating products, they're building a gateway for all types of investors. Some of those people that are short, they'll short a billion dollars of MicroStrategy and they'll buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin. And so if we didn't exist, then billions and billions of dollars of capital from the traditional finance markets wouldn't be invested in Bitcoin because they can't buy or hold the underlying crypto asset. They can only buy securities or bonds or options or other instruments. This innovation in Bitcoin-backed securities isn't just about micro-strategy. It could change how every major company thinks about their treasury strategy. And according to Saylor, traditional companies are missing out on a massive opportunity. But if I was talking to Apple, I would say, don't buy back 100 billion of your stock. Buy 100 billion of Bitcoin. It will go to 500 billion. You'll have a $500 billion business growing 20% a year. You'll make 100 billion in investment gains a year. Your investors will look at it and they'll add a trillion or $2 trillion to your market cap. The impact of such a move would go beyond just profits. It could fundamentally change how companies are valued and how they manage risk. And now the company will be valued 60% based upon the operating business, 40% based on the balance sheet, and the risk will shift because the risk in a conventional company is the balance sheet's worthless and the company's valued based upon the P&L. To illustrate why this matters, Saylor uses a comparison that anyone can understand. That's why these companies' stocks crash if the company had $40 billion of tangible assets on the balance sheet, that puts a floor right on the equity. And, and really what you want is you want a well-balanced company where it, it, I mean, it's like Harvard University or Yale. They're not valued based upon the earnings of this semester of freshmen entering Harvard. They're valued because they have 18 billion in the endowment, you know? And, if they close the university, they're still rich. They have 18 billion in the endowment. And Saylor isn't just theorizing. He has specific predictions about where this could lead. When asked about Bitcoin's future value, his answer was clear. You know, my view is Bitcoin's gonna appreciate 29% a year ARR for the next 21 years. That's Which my Which takes base it to case. what? What's the dollar, dollar figure on that? 13 million. Per Bitcoin. Yeah. So what do you think? Will Bitcoin-backed securities reshape traditional finance, as Saylor suggests? If you ask us, there might be something to his ideas, even if a $13 million Bitcoin price tag sounds a bit ambitious. What Saylor and MicroStrategy are doing could open new doors for how companies think about their treasury strategies. The idea of transforming traditional financial products using Bitcoin as backing is certainly innovative. But will every major company follow their lead? That might take some time. While Bitcoin-backed securities solve real problems in traditional finance, getting conservative companies to embrace such a dramatic change won't happen overnight. If you think differently, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.